I'm going to um, today follow up with uh, some of the work that's been previously conducted and look at uh, drug residues following euthanasia and uh, mortality compost piles from uh, horse carcasses. And this was a collaborative project that was conducted between Oklahoma State University as well as Cornell University. When you think of horses that are suffering from an incurable illness or injury, euthanasia is often the most humane option. The AVMA acceptable euthanasia methods include barbiturate overdose, which is uh, the most common method, uh, sodium pentobarbital being the drug of choice, precise gunshot to the temporal lobe, as well as captive bolt to the temporal lobe are all acceptable methods. For sodium pentobarbital, in 2002, the FDA added an environmental warning label to it. And the concern was whether the drug would persist in carcass tissue. Um, furthermore, we're looking at a concern of secondary poisoning from animals that would actually consume carcass tissue containing sodium pentobarbital. There have been reports of domestic pets, large exotic cats at zoos, and other wildlife, including bald eagles that have become um, poisoned from uh, consuming this uh, tissue with the drug in it. So questions exist as to whether uh, there are environmental risks, what are the environmental risks, and uh, there's been a little bit of work looking at composting and whether or not it could actually degrade drug residues. So the research has been limited. Um, there has been research showing that it can persist in the environment. Uh, it can be relatively stable in natural waters and blood and tissue, et cetera. And there's been concurrent research occurring in 2010, 2013, and what I'm presenting today where uh, it was determined that pentobarbital can persist in equine mortality compost piles. The researchers identified a need for further investigation utilizing uh, replicated treatment and control groups, so that's what I'm going to be reporting today in the study that uh, we kind of followed up with all this. So the objectives of this study were to um, look at carcass degradation in euthanized horses and, and uh, observe the effects of uh, wood chips on degradation as well as look at sodium pentobarbital degradation up to approximately one year time frame. To go into the experimental design, we had six 12-foot bins that were constructed. These were constructed using T-post and horse panel. Um, the horse panel worked really well for keeping the bulking agent, which was hardwood chips mixed with a little yard waste uh, contained and together. We looked at three treatment bins of uh, sodium pentobarbital, uh, euthanized carcasses, three control bins of gunshot, uh, precise gunshot to the temporal lobe carcasses, and wiffle balls were placed underneath uh, each of the carcasses in the central area, and actually what these wiffle balls did was, uh, the purpose was to absorb leachate so that we could then capture that and sample it over time. Uh, here is a schematic of uh, the randomized complete block design. Data loggers were placed between the, car the, uh, the bins, and uh, we had probes going into each bin placed on the front and hind quarter where we could record core compost pile temperatures over time. This recording was conducted every hour. And this is a look at the bin. It had approximately 18 inch to 24 inch pad. Uh, basically what this uh, structure does and having the horse panel, as mentioned earlier, it keeps everything contained uh, without uh, using as much of a carbon footprint. And so this was the base for carcass placement. You notice in the front of the bin, this can be unwired and opened so that you can access it with a front end loader. Wiffle balls were cut in half and then they were uh, stuffed with the wood chip yard waste uh, mixture. Uh, 
and they were centrally placed underneath the carcass uh, in the center part of the carcass. We had 24 wiffle balls per carcass. Uh, they uh, were basically between the front and hind quarter of each carcass. I will mention each horse required euthanasia for health reasons. Uh, these were older horse, horses. We had a licensed veterinarian humanely euthanize each horse. All six horses were weighed, sedated, and then uh, administered eight mils of xylazine. Um, the treated horses received 60 mils of uh, euthanasia D, which contains 390 milligrams per mil of sodium pentobarbital. And then the control horses, after uh, being sedated, were anesthetized with 15 mils of ketamine hydrochloride, followed by precise gunshot to the temporal lobe. Carcasses were placed on uh, the pad and uh, then covered with approximately two feet of carbon material. You notice that the carbon material was wetted as it was uh, placed onto each carcass. And then here's what the uh, covered carcass looks like. Sodium pentobarbital samples were taken from soil, uh, serum, uh, or actually samples were taken and analyzed for sodium pentobarbital, and the samples we took were soil, serum, liver, and wiffle ball samples. Uh, we had three reps per each sample. Soil samples were taken on day negative one and day 367. Uh, serum and liver samples were taken immediately following euthanasia, and then wiffle ball samples were taken anywhere from day 7 to day 367. If you notice that day 129, the piles were turned, and uh, that is the approximately four-month mark. As mentioned, temperature was recorded hourly using uh, data loggers. And moving on to the results. On the y-axis, you can see Celsius. On the x-axis, you see days ranging from zero to day 367. And on the z-axis, we're looking at millimeters of rainfall. This is daily amounts of rainfall. And uh, I'll try to click on the pointer here so I can showcase uh, 55 degrees uh, Celsius. It's kind of a, a target point for pathogen reduction. This is approximately 131 Fahrenheit. You can see that at the beginning of the trial, both the control and treatment bins reached this for a period of about 17 or 18 days. Um, something else that I'll point out is the difference between ambient temperature versus bin temperature. This averaged 17 degrees Celsius uh, throughout the course of the study. Uh, another thing that I noticed was that anytime we had significant rainfall amounts over 45 millimeters, uh, this was uh, approximately 1.78 inches, you notice that we see a spike in the temperature within the piles. And uh, I would expect this. This is because of increased microbial activity uh, due to increased moisture within the pile. Another reason that we see a spike in temperature here is because at day 129 we turn the piles. So we're opening the piles up, aerating them, and uh, the bacteria are getting exposed to that increased oxygen level and the pile temperature increases as well. But basically what we're seeing here is that we had efficient composting occurring uh, throughout the, the trial and uh, temperatures were well above ambient temperature. We looked at carcass degradation scores at four months, and uh, the lower score uh, reflects a lower degradation uh, or less degradation. A higher score reflects a higher degradation rate. Um, essentially, what we're seeing here is at day 129, our scores were either three or four, and a lot of this depended on the weight of the carcass, the heavier weights. Uh, we did not see as much degradation, and that would be expected. However, within a year, we were to a point of a score of four, showing no hide present, minimal hair, and the flesh was completely degraded. Only large bones were left. If this were a younger animal, I would expect that uh, we could degrade uh, most of the bones as well. And uh, I have seen that from some of our work with uh, Stalker calves that we have degraded both soft tissue and bones 
Older animals uh, having more calcified bones are a bit harder to degrade some of those bones. At four months, uh, this is what it looked like when we're opening the piles. You can see that there's uh, minimal soft tissue remaining and we're just basically dealing with bones and some hair. Moving on to the uh, sodium pentobarbital concentrations, this is dry weight. Uh, you can see this ranges from day 7 to day 367, and we're comparing our treatment versus our control. Um, we did not see sodium pentobarbital in our control as expected. Our treatment on day 7, we started with recovering 65 parts per million. We ended uh, around 33 parts per million at, at the one-year mark. Uh, we did see high variability between some of these samples, um, but you know I think that's expected. We're going to have some hot spots where we have higher drug levels than, than other areas. Um, they ranged from 33 to 93 parts per million. We did not see a significant uh, effect within the treatment. And uh, what I'm seeing here is not, not really a clear trend of uh, the sodium pentobarbital residues uh, declining over a year time. Here we're looking at the as-received values. This, uh, I want to point out the liver and serum concentrations. And uh, the liver was 54 parts per million. The serum was 140 parts per million. So that kind of gives us an initial baseline of what these concentrations are. Now, soil samples. Uh, at day negative one, we looked at uh, soil samples, tested it for sodium pentobarbital, and uh, we did not find any in the soil as expected. However, within a year's time, we did find uh, uh, small amounts of sodium pentobarbital within the treated bins. Each of the treated bins uh, tested positive for sodium pentobarbital within the soil. We did not see that within the control. So the drug was able to leach through our uh, wood chips and uh, make it to the soil immediately below the uh, carcass. Now, how does this compare to the previous work? And, and I say previous work, really, this, all three of these studies were concurrent. Um, Cottle in 2010 reported up to three parts per million at 180 days. So it's a lot lower than what we're seeing. The difference in the study, they took grab samples. They looked at eight horses, and they looked at a varied dosage level between 50 to 90 mils. And uh, in 2013, Mary, who just spoke, um, their work looked at uh, one horse. Uh, they used the same sampling scheme that, that we uh, used, which we got that sampling scheme from them. Uh, they reported up to 11 parts per million. And um, they were given uh, administering 120 mils of uh, 390 milligram per mil sodium pentobarbital. Our current study, we had up to 93 parts per million at one year mark. Uh, we looked at six horses. We had three replicates per treatment and control. And we were administering 60 mils of uh, the sodium pentobarbital at 390 milligrams per mil. Differences? It's a good question. Uh, it could be due to uh, carbon material that was used. Perhaps the yard waste that we had absorbed uh, more of the drug level. Um, we also had all of our carcasses within the center of the carcass, and I'm sorry, had all our wiffle balls within the center of the carcass, whereas uh, the uh, 2013 study had wiffle balls located throughout the, uh, the carcass including legs, et cetera. Environmental risk, um, I think that's a good question. I think it's something uh, to give more thought to and perhaps uh, it lends an opportunity for more research. I can give an example scenario of um, the ortho, oral lethal dose for dogs, which is 85 milligrams per kilogram. The anesthetic dose for dogs is uh, 30 milligrams per kilogram. So if we had 54 milligrams, per kilogram or parts per million in our liver concentration, a 20 kilogram dog would have to consume 32 kilograms to reach that lethal dose or 10 kilograms for an anesthetic dose. And you might ask, well, how much would a 20 kilogram dog consume daily? Uh, about 2.5% of the body weight daily. So that would equate to around 
0.5 kilograms. So in this scenario, it seems unlikely that a 20-kilogram uh, dog would consume enough to reach that uh, lethal dose or the anesthetic dose. In conclusion, we did successfully degrade soft tissue within four months. Um, we detected sodium pentobarbital out to one year. There was no clear trend of reducing that drug level. Um, pentobarbital did leach through the wood chip pad and uh, made it into the soil. And the findings, they actually confirm the, the persistence that uh, it, it does persist out there, even in equine mortality compost piles. Um, and it emphasizes the importance of proper carcass management, whether that be composting or a, an alternative method. But uh, it, it can persist in the environment. I would say that composting would cover the carcass with two feet of material. That would also dilute any drug level or trace amounts that are left and deter scavenging, and especially when you have a constructed barrier around the pile uh, that would deter scavenging. Uh, as opposed to other me methods such as abandonment or partial burial. So that concludes my brief overview of our work. And if you want to read more about it, you could go to extension.org and type in a search for sodium pentobarbital. Thanks.